we are doing Nate Cone improvement, and I believe we're on posture seven, right? The tiger. If I'm not right on that, let me know. I'm pretty sure that's the one we're on. So, um, ride the tiger. Um, we just did a few of them. We didn't do as many today as we sometimes do. Um, what to say about it? Well, we could start like with the feet, like usual, but let's start a little more abstract. So, um, wow, handy dandy book opened up to the right page already. So, um, I was trying to think if there was going to be an above view, but no, there's not an above view. So, if you could see this posture from above, when we get out into Ride the Tiger, you're going to see an S shape in the legs. And so, we're going to talk about how it's hard to keep your tuck in this posture how it's hard to keep the knees out in this posture, and how it's hard to feel where you're turning your waist. Some challenges besides the memorization. So um, let's go back to the memorization kind of stuff, just in case you don't have that down 100% yet. That's okay. Um, I mirrored you for basic training. I'm gonna be in, facing the same way as you for black size training at first. So the hands on the hips, the feet turn, 45 degrees. Now, as we step out, we want to try to keep our hips and our feet at basically that same 45 degree angle. So that's usually where this goes off in different directions. Um, the toes will tend to turn out and sometimes students think they need a 90 degree angle. No, they may go there at extreme depth, but in general you want to try to be about 45 the whole time. So um, let me show it to you from the side actually, Let's see if that helps. So here we are from the side, we have the 45 degree angles in the feet. Now, my forward is gonna be sideways for you, but I'm trying to keep that 45 degree angle in both feet. I might even step the back foot out. You might notice in the book that he's stepping forward and back out at the same time, whereas in class, we just step forward. Um, yes, you're correct. Um, part of that has to do with our floor and the shoes and this non-stick, very non-stick surface where we can't do any sliding. But, so I'm gonna keep stepping out. I can do both ways if I want. Try to keep my 45 degree angle in the feet, keep my hips facing 45, and then I'm gonna to try to turn my shoulders to the front. If you've heard of turning the waist, yes, this is turning the waist. Common mistakes you heard me say in basic training a lot is being a little more on the front than on the back in a small lunge. So try to back off and feel where both knees are bent the same amount. I can feel it lock in right there for me. Second is that S shape second, I don't know what number we're on. The next thing is that S shape in the legs. So from above, because I have knee out, it's gonna look like it goes back here, then forward here, and then back. I could lie on my side, maybe you could see it, but that wouldn't make any sense. Tendency is to, when I turn my shoulders, that this knee can collapse in, and that's not what we want. So keep the knee out. That was a long time to be in it and talk. Let's go the other way. I'll show you from the other side. 45 degree angles with the feet. I'll step forward and back just to keep centered on the camera. However far I want to try, depending on how soft my floor is, turn the shoulders, keep the back knee out. It's really both knees out, but the back knee is the one that tries to Once I step out, it's very challenging, if not impossible, to get my tuck back. So how do I deal with that? Well, I start, and it's sometimes I'll say it even in basic training, where I bend the knees and tuck in just a little bit to begin, and then as I step out, my focus is to keep that tuck. So at some point, I'll take, I might take a step and feel like, oh, I just untucked. I'm gonna back off and try again. This is, of course, on your own, not in class. So here I go, I keep my tuck. Focus on the tuck, focus on the tuck, focus on the tuck. And at some point you'll learn that if I go any lower than this, at this point I'll lose my tuck and I might be flexible enough to do it, but it's not right to tiger. And up. I don't know if you're doing it along with me or just watching, I would suggest watching. We'll do some more in a second together. Go at 45, which means my feet will point towards you. So if 
this messes you up, just ignore it. Just stepping out of the 45 degree angle, show you another. You know, if this were class, you'd be able to walk around and see the different sides. When we get our VR set up, we'll do that. And so, it's hard to see the tuck or the no tuck on here. Um, when we're back together in person, we'll help you feel it. And um, you can practice just trying to feel it on your own. You can always check that arch in the low back. We, we really want, after we step out, to have neutral spine, just like all these postures. So from the base of your tucked-in pelvis, as I say to the, not just me, people say it before me, but from the base of your tucked-in pelvis to the top of your head with your chin tucked slightly, that's your neutral spine, and that's the axis that you want to twist through, or around, I should say, this posture. So let's try a few more together, all face away from you, so we can just practice to handle the hips to the left. Here it goes, let's try it. Sink a little bit. This might take longer than basic training, but we're gonna to try to work through some things. Feel a bit of the tuck in the relaxation. Try to keep it, step out. This is why we do small steps, so you can pay attention. And if you go too big of a step, you'll definitely lose the tuck, especially if you are fairly new. Okay, focus on the tuck. Stepped out as far as I wanted to, turn the shoulders. forward a little bit. Oh. Other way. Sink, feel for the tuck. If some other aspect like the feet or something is a little off, don't worry about it. Just try to keep the tuck. Step. Small steps. Test it out. Am I, do I feel my tuck? Do I feel my tuck? Do I feel my tuck? If at some point you lose it, that's okay. We'll get it better next time. We'll get a feel for it over repeated practice. Turn the shoulders. Unlike, you know, hit the tiger. Hit the tiger, we try to come out of it in one push off, keeping the knee out over the toe to not injure it. And ride the tiger, no. Small steps, don't try to come out of it. Um, uh, let's do a couple more before that. One more element. And that is, well, should we even talk about that? No, let's do a couple more. Maybe we'll talk about it before we go. So, hand on the hips, turn left. focus on the tuck if you like. And okay. yeah, so the last thing I'll say is about the qua. The qua is if you picture old school Superman outfit the, the brief, the line around the briefs, that's the qua. So you'll, you'll see it in your Nate Kong book too. It's got a little illustration. It's where the thigh and the hip meet. It's the hip joint. It's the qua. So one of the eight principles of Nate Kong is a loose qua. Loose that joint. So as you step out, you might feel a stretch in the qua area. That's okay. Try to relax through it. Pardon me. Almost sneezed. Try to relax through it. And the knee out pelvis tuck will all go together with the loose quad to give you a relaxed, stable posture just with practice. Okay, that's probably enough on Ride the Tiger for today. So let's bow out our black sash training. Path of self-mastery requires a focused mind. A focused mind sees no obstacles. The path of self-mastery requires a focused mind. A focused mind sees no obstacles. Path of self mastery requires a focused mind. A focused mind sees no obstacles. <laughs>
access training dismissed. 